In this video, we'll be looking at how you can create different looks from the same slides. So you can send the same information to two different outputs with a completely different look. For example, in church, you might have your slides inside the church on the screens, but you might want to send the same information to lower thirds on your live stream at the same time. Let's get started. To do this, we need to go through four main steps. Things do get a little bit complicated, so let's just outline the four steps first. Number one, we'll create our theme. So this is what gives our slides the look and the design of the slide that we want for our lower third. Number two, we'll add a new screen to ProPresenter. So it has our congregation screens as well as our new screens for our live stream. Number three, we'll create a new look. This is where we tell ProPresenter which theme we're going to use and which screen we'll send it to and what to send. And number four, we then just apply that look to our slides. Let's get started. So here in ProPresenter, we have our song. And what we want to do is we want to show this song like it is here in church. So that's our main display, or we've called it our congregation display. You can see here in the preview. But then we want to show these lyrics without this background video on a lower third down here on a different screen at the same time. So we can do that by firstly designing our new slide. So instead of going into slides or editing our slides up here, what we want to do is create a new theme. So let's go into our dots here, into our editing part of our taskbar, and we're going to choose theme editor. Now I've already set a new theme up called lower thirds, but to do that, you just click new theme and name it whatever you'd like. And it's sort of like creating a new slide. So I just add a new slide here with this little plus. I'm going to right click and rename it lower third song lyrics. Why am I calling it that? Because in the future, I might have one set up for song lyrics. I might have another one set up for like message slides. I might have one set up for names and titles. Another one set up for videos. Another one set up for all different things. So if you think through your server structure, once you get your head around this, they're sort of templates that you can use over and over again in different ways to make your life easier. So to create our lower third for our songs, what I have done in the past that seems to work well is I'm going to bring my text right down and I'm going to leave it a little bit off the bottom. The reason I do that is because if I put my text box all the way to the bottom and my text fills that entire box, it'll actually run right across the bottom. So I leave a little gap. And then what I've done in the past that's worked quite well is I go and draw a rectangle. About that big, I reckon, looks good. And I put it behind my text by dragging it. And for my rectangle, I'm going to change the color to white. And then I'm going to drag my opacity down to about 20%. So what this does is if you imagine behind here is our live feed from our camera, this opaque rectangle that you can now see through will sort of show over our camera shot and you'll still be able to see things through here but it's enough to help our text stand out from the background because if you just show this text over your camera feed it's quite difficult to read at times so this is a nice easy way to get around that but you can design it however you'd like to um the other thing i would do here with your text is i'm going to go up to text and I'm going to turn on scaled text down to fit container. What that means is if our song lyrics are really long and say there's like 100 words here and they don't fit in this text box at size 50 that it's set at, it will automatically make the text smaller and smaller and smaller until it all fits in that box. Now remember, if it's all too small, we can always use the reflow tool to reflow it and rearrange it quickly and easily. But it's just a way to help you not have to fiddle with different sizes and getting things right straight away. You can play around with that setting once you understand what's going on. So that's our lower third slide setup. So that's step one. Now back to our slides. Step two, we need to set up a new output in ProPresenter. So for that, we're going up to screens. We're going down to configure screens. And we need it to be an audience output because it's going out to the audience in some form. Now, this sort of depends on your scenario. There's probably two main um, easy answers to this, but yours might be slightly different. 
Number one is you can create a new NDI, which is a protocol where your ProPresenter computer can push your slides across a network um, to another computer and then bring it in. So if you're using ProPresenter on one computer and live streaming from another, NDI may work for you because it can talk through the computer. You probably need an ethernet cable at the very least to do that because through Wi-Fi and things, it just won't work. The other option that's probably the easy answer is another screen which can use SDI or HDMI. So a lot of churches might have a Blackmagic Mini Pro. So we have one at church and we actually bring our slides out of the computer into our A10 Blackmagic Mini Pro via HDMI. And then that does all of our encoding for us. So for now, we're gonna use one of our placeholder screens. And so there's our new placeholder screen. Next, we have to rename our screen. So we're just gonna go up and double click on the name and we're gonna call it live stream for this example so that we know which one it is. And it's all set up and ready to go. So next up is step three. So for step three, where you need to configure our look so that it does what we want it to do and it knows which theme to use and which screen to go to. So for that, we go up here into screens and we go and click on edit looks. Once this opens, you'll notice that it has all our screens. So if you had six audience screens set up because you want six different things in six different places, you could have six different rows across here. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna set up some presets. So what we'll do is we're gonna add a preset, which is just a new look. So I'm gonna rename my look by double clicking on it and I'm gonna call it lower third songs. Now, whatever you name it here is what it will be called in the looks when we go to apply it to our slides. So just name it something that makes sense to you. Over here, we get to choose what we send to each different place whenever this look is applied. So for our songs, we're not going to be using props or messages in this example or announcements. We're not going to use video input because we're not bringing any camera feeds in. And then between our slide and our media, we just need to be a little bit careful. For our slide, do we want the information on our slide to go to our congregation and our live stream? This text here on our slide is the information. So I do want it on my congregation and I do want it on my live stream. Media, in this example, is this purple background. Now, do I want it on my congregation? Yes. Do I want it on my live stream? No, I only want to take the text from the slide to my live stream. Now, the one thing we haven't done is told ProPresenter how we want that text to look when we apply this look on each screen. So I can click on here and I can choose all of my themes from before. Now, just take note, the way that we're setting this up right now is our congregation screens will have no theme and no look applied because the slides have been just are designed the way we want them to look. So this has nothing. For our live stream, we put them in a theme called our lower thirds. And for this example, it's our song lyrics. Our lower third song lyrics is what we called it. So remember before when I said, if you added message slides um, and one for names and titles, it's just really important to remember how you're naming things because you need to go back and find them and link them all together. So we're gonna choose lower third song lyrics. And you'll notice the little picture here changes. Once that's done, when we still have our congregation screen up, it looks the same. When I go into here and I now look at my live stream screen, it also looks the same. So the final step that we need to do is we need to apply the look that we've just set up. So when I say look, I'm talking about this look here that's called lower third songs. Now to do that, there's a few options. I can either go in and I can apply a look through the action palette. So if I go to view and I go action palette, it'll bring this up and I'm gonna drag it over and I'm gonna apply it to this first slide here. When I drop it in, it gives me the choice between all my audience looks. Now we've only set up one for lower third songs here. So let's click done and let's see what happens. We have our live stream up. I'm gonna click this slide again 
and my CCLI information is still there. Now that's a little bit different and I'm not gonna change that right now. But when I go to my next slide, you'll notice it's showing the lower thirds and you can probably just make out that opaque, that we turn the opacity right down on that rectangle and it's there as well. And so when we flick through, our lower thirds are looking like this. But if I go back to the same slide and I change to my congregation, our congregation screens will look like that. And so we have the same information going to two different places at the same time with two completely different looks. Now, where this gets powerful is that if you want to create lots of different types of themes. So when I say themes, I'm talking about in here in the theme editor. So I could set up one for say message slides for my pastor. I could set one up for say videos. I could set one up for pictures. And you've just got to think through the different types of things that you may display on your live stream and in church and whether or not they need to look the same or different. So when I go back into edit looks here, what is really powerful is our lower third songs, we didn't want our media going across. If I wanted to show a video in church and on the live stream, at the same time, so that took up the full screen of my live stream, I could simply do this. And this is now called video. There's my media. So I'm going to show my media because that's where the video lives on both the con congregation and the live stream. And I might turn the slides on on both, depending on if there's slides to go with it as well. If it's just a video, I could turn that off. And I wouldn't have to create any sort of theme whatsoever because it will be displayed the same on both. And so that would be set up. And then I could go back in here. And if I now apply, so this time, instead of opening the action palette, I'm just right clicking. If I add an action to this and I change the audience look, you'll notice I can't because I need to go down here to edit action. And if I change it to video, this time on our live stream as well, this video is taking up our full screen. So you can see that if you create multiple different themes and then multiple different looks, it gets quite powerful because you just need to think through your servers and think about the different elements and how they're going to be displayed.